Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Bio with Miss Lisa. Today, we're going to be talking about anaerobic respiration. Okay, all of the diagrams that I'm using during this video, I will post the link to their original source in the description. All right, so, so far, we've been talking about cellular respiration, the aerobic respiration of cellular respiration. Aerobic means, you think of aerobics, like doing exercise, it means oxygen. Okay, and today we're going to talk about, okay, well, what if we don't have oxygen present? Some bacteria live in places that have no oxygen because they're either too deep in the ocean, they're too deep underground, um, they're inside of places in organisms where there's lack of um, oxygen. Sometimes during exercise, even a human being, some of your cells might have a shortage of oxygen. How can they survive in this environment um, if they don't have oxygen? So remember, cellular respiration or aerobic respiration requires oxygen for the electron transport chain. Okay, so if we don't have oxygen, the electron transport chain can't run and the Krebs cycle can't run. The Krebs cycle can't run because um, it requires NAD plus and it requires FAD and it can't get those if the electron transport chain is not running. Okay. Our only hope is glycolysis. So although in glycolysis we can't make those 32, 34 ATP, at least cells when there's no oxygen, at least they can make two ATP. And so what is our goal in anaerobic respiration? To keep glycolysis running and making those two ATP. All right, so I've written the goal here. What is our goal? To keep glycolysis running and producing its two ATP. So let's go back to glycolysis and let's take a look at it. If we wanna keep glycolysis producing ATP, what do we need? Okay, well, Glycolysis, it needs NAD plus, okay? In order for it to keep running and keep making this NADH and keep the process going, it needs ADP, it needs NAD plus, and it does need two ATP, okay? But the main input that we're gonna talk about today is NAD plus. How does glycolysis keep getting that NAD plus if we don't have the electron transport chain converting our NADH that we're making back into NAD+. So if we keep having glycolysis running and running, we're gonna have a bunch of NADH, but we're not gonna have any NAD plus left if nothing is using that NADH, okay? So today we're gonna to talk about anaerobic respiration, in particular fermentation. So the goal of fermentation is to replenish that NAD plus regenerate that NAD plus for glycolysis. So let's take a look at this diagram here. I will clarify right now that there is an error in this diagram, but it is the best diagram I can find. So this arrow should be going this direction, and this arrow should be going this direction. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Here's my glycolysis, glucose being converted into pyruvate. We know that, okay? We know it produces 2 ATP, okay? We know it produces NADH. We know that it requires NAD+, okay? So we wanna keep doing glycolysis. Well, how do we keep that NAD+, okay? Fermentation. Our goal of fermentation is to regenerate the NAD+, so glycolysis can keep running. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I paused that. Okay, so what is my goal of fermentation? To regenerate NAD plus so glycolysis can keep running. And there's two types of fermentation. Depending on the species, the organism, it will determine which type of fermentation the organism will do. Okay, so, and we will talk about which organisms do each in a minute. 
So the first type of fermentation is called alcoholic fermentation. And in alcoholic fermentation, this pyruvate is going to be converted into ethyl alcohol, also known as ethanol. And in this process, carbon dioxide will be produced. Okay. This is, I'll mention it later again, but this is commonly associated with um, alcoholic beverages because it produces ethanol or, ethyl, with, or ethyl alcohol, and it's commonly associated with the making of bread. So we use alcoholic fermentation in the making of bread because it produces carbon dioxide, which gives us the bubbles and the expansion of the bread to make it nice and fluffy. Okay, All right, the rising of the bread, I should say. Okay, and once again, what is this purpose of turning the pyruvate into ethanol? The purpose is so we can replenish that NAD plus to keep glycolysis producing its two ATP. Other organisms, so this is usually found in yeast, fungi, okay. Um, other organisms, usually multicellular, and some bacteria will do lactic acid fermentation. So instead of turning the pyruvate into ethanol, they will turn the pyruvate into lactate. This is better for organisms like humans because we don't want our cells when we're exercising to start producing ethanol, right? That would be very harmful to our bodies. So in this case, it's converted into lactate. Um, there's no gas produced, but it does produce NAD+, or regenerate NAD+, so glycolysis can keep producing that 2 ATP. So some key points here. If, well, I'm sorry. So I will just quickly go over the um, a breakdown of the two. So type one occurs in yeast, some other fungi and bacteria. What is it doing? It's converting pyruvate into ethanol and carbon dioxide. Why? To produce NAD plus for glycolysis. And real life examples, alcoholic beverages, and the baking of bread. And we have lactic acid fermentation, usually done by multicellular organisms such as humans and some bacteria. Uh, converts pyruvate into lactic acid, once again, to produce NAD plus for glycolysis. And a real life example would be yogurt. So yogurt is essentially milk, which we have added bacteria to that, have, that are doing lactic acid fermentation. So we have basically lactate being formed, um, giving the yogurt its flavor. So if you wanna know kind of the flavor of this um, substance, there you have it, yogurt. All right, so let's quickly just compare and contrast. Um, well, I think lactic acid fermentation and alcoholic fermentation. I'll write down some of my thoughts and then we can discuss them. Okay, so lactic acid fermentation usually happens in multicellular organisms, some bacteria. It produces lactate. Um, alcoholic fermentation happens in yeast and fungi, produces ethanol and carbon dioxide. And both of them regenerate NAD plus for glycolysis to continue running in the absence of oxygen. Um, they both require enzymes. As of all the processes of cellular respiration, they require enzymes, so they are affected by things like temperature, salinity, pH. Requires pyruvate, they both require pyruvate. Um, so they are actually converting the pyruvate into lactate and converting the pyruvate into ethanol. If you go back into our diagram, you can see pyruvate is turning into ethanol, pyruvate is turning into lactate. If we want to compare this process to aerobic respiration, let's think about it for a second. Um, anaerob aerobic respiration, how many ATP are we producing? Well, about 34 in the electron transport chain, two in citric acid cycle, two in glycolysis. So that's about 38 ATP that we are creating or produced, I should say. Um, and it, it requires oxygen, right? So anaerobic respiration, how many are we produce? Sorry, produce per glucose molecule. Um, anaerobic respiration, this is when we don't have oxygen. Okay, and how many ATP does it produce? Only two, just the two we make in glycolysis. So we're only producing two ATP produced per glucose, okay? And um, it uh, occurs when oxygen is not present. Okay. Or in organisms that um, can survive when there's no oxygen present or only when there's um, when there's no oxygen present, okay? Um, so yeah, 
All right, I hope that clarifies everything and uh, have a great day. Okay, and once again, we already said both of these processes require enzymes. They both require um, glucose, right? Um, but remember, aerobic respiration requires oxygen, anaerobic respiration does not. All right, thanks for joining Bio with Miss Lisa today.